all yours, Tracy. All right. Well, thank you so much. I am super excited to be here, and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with this group. Um, as Meg says, this is such a, an amazing crowd of people who are already excited about this. And I think what's really great about the people that are excited about education is that teaching is leadership at the front of the room. Uh, so we have a bunch of teachers and we have a bunch of leaders um, in this group that are interested and excited to make an impact in their communities. Whoops. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is what I'm going to talk about uh, today. And I, I work with the Carpentries, uh, but I used to teach swimming. Um, and so when I taught swimming, you actually can learn to teach swimming. It's a 40-hour course through the American Red Cross. Um, and when we learn to teach swimming, you know, walk through, there's certain things that everyone needs to know about swimming, like put your face in the water, put your head under the water, kick your feet, move your arms. The, the kind of core skills are not overwhelmingly complicated. Um, so what we talk about is how to introduce those skills, what order to introduce them, how to work with the people um, in the pool, uh, adults to children. And so when we talk about learning to swim, this is never how we approach it. <laughs> Where you walk someone to the edge of the pool and you push them in, the deep end, right? Um, does this person, obviously this is not that scenario, come back to swimming lessons the next day? Would we expect that to happen if we took someone who didn't know how to swim and threw them in the deep end? Probably not. Um, instead, what we're taught is that we want to support people in their learning. We want to be there with them. We want to provide guidance. We want to introduce things at an appropriate level. Um, but yet somehow when we move into the computational realm, we forget some of these things that we know about learning. Um, and we sort of throw people in the deep end, not because we think that that's what we should do necessarily, but maybe we've forgotten what it was like to learn to swim, what the deep end looks like. Maybe we don't know how to introduce things in the right order, how to create the environment for our learners. Um, and so in swimming, we're really motivated uh, to do it this way rather than the other way because actual drowning has a lot of bad implications. It's not quite as obvious when we're teaching someone coding. So what we see is that how we teach is as important as what we teach, right? Same things in swimming, but one person is never getting in the water again, and another person can go through the steps to learn to swim. And so we talk about bringing compute to data. Maybe in this conference we'll have a lot of that. Compute to data or data to compute. But what we need to do is we need to bring people to data and to software. Because we want to empower all people, culturally and linguistically diverse students, to use data and software to answer questions that are important to them. By having more people who have these skills and these perspectives, we have more opportunity to answer questions in science and society, and for these people themselves, most of all, to feel empowered to do the things that they want to do. And I took Meg's uh, statement here, I like the access counts, um, right? access for everyone to be able to learn these things is important. And when we're thinking about that framework, and this is what Meg was saying too, it's really important that we consider how we teach if we want to bring these to everybody. So I'm going to be talking about um, some of these elements from the perspective of the Carpentries. The Carpentries uh, is a nonprofit organization, and we're an open global community teaching researchers and librarians the skills and perspectives to turn data into knowledge. Uh, and we do this through our curriculum, our instructor training program, and our community. Um, and so what we realized in the Carpentries, we started out teaching skills. And the more we taught, the more we realized that the most important thing to select for is confidence and self-efficacy. We teach short format workshops, two days. In two days, we're not necessarily going to be able to, we definitely can't teach everything. But at the end of the two days, it's not as important if you know exactly how to write a line of syntax than if it's you have now the confidence to continue learning, that you have some ability to keep learning yourself. That's the thing that's going to keep you going on your exciting coding path. 
And so what's really great is in having this mentality, um, there's already a lot work of work done in this space in educational pedagogy and culturally responsive teaching that can help guide um, our practices. So when I talk about the things that we're doing, these are things that come from um, from the literature, from research that can help guide our practices. So we still have more to learn, um, but this is where we are right now. Um, so these are two great resources. I would highly recommend both of these books. Um, and the other amazing thing is that in the Carpentries, uh, we have about 2,000 volunteer instructors. Um, and so these instructors, too, are contributing to all the ideas that I'm going to talk about today through their teaching, through their learning. They're contributing to our instructor training, to our materials, talking to each other in the community. Um, so we have a really rich resource that contributes to these ideas and people passionate about teaching people um, and learning coding skills. And so all of this is incorporated into our instructor training program. It's also a two-day program um, that highlights a lot of these things that I'm going to talk about. Um, and all is this is all open source or CC BY. Um, so you can check out our materials too, and if this, some of these things seem interesting. Okay, so I'm going to focus on when I talk about how we teach three sort of concepts, and then some of the things that we do within each of these concepts. Um, so the first is creating the classroom community. The second is talking about productive struggle. And then finally, assessment for learning. So creating the classroom community, or a container for learning. So sometimes you hear the phrase, we need to, cr to create the container for learning. What space is someone walking into where they're going to learn? So if someone is walking in feeling insecure, maybe the first way they learned it is being pushed in the deep end of the pool. If that's how they're feeling, you need to create a space where they can feel safe to learn to try to fail. Um, so every person needs a place that is furnished with hope. You want people to be hopeful um, when they walk in that room. Okay, so just as an example, so who in this room has been in a course or a workshop where they felt like they didn't belong? <laughs> and then how many people then left that topic for a while or maybe even forever? So that space, that sense of belonging impacts that content. You can think to yourself, if you've now come back to that subject, is it because you were incapable? Or was it because it was your first, that your first experience with that topic? So how we are taught has such an impact on what it is we decide that we can learn. So what do we do in the Carpentries um, to create this classroom community? Um, so I'm just going to highlight five things. Um, and so the first um, introductions is connecting with your learners. So when you're creating this space, the learner wants to know that they can trust you, that they're, you're an advocate for them. Um, so we have a whole sort of introductions to introductions. So how you introduce yourself as an instructor has a big impact. Um, and I, I'll do a quick example. So uh, I could introduce myself two different ways uh, to this group. Or let's say you're a classroom, I could say, hi, my name is Tracy. I've been working in bioinformatics for 20 years. Uh, my favorite thing to do is work at the Linux command line, and computers are awesome, so let's go. Do you feel like I'm going to connect with you necessarily? Or I could say, hi, my name is Tracy. I've been working in biology for 20 years. Um, I've been able to use some computational approaches, and it really was exciting what I what that let me do, and I'm really excited to be here today to share some of those skills with you and so that we can all work together um, to learn computational approaches in biology. Which one thinks has you thinking that I'm on your side? Right, so it does start <laughs> the second, I hope, maybe the first. <laughs> it depends on the audience, right? So that's something to know, right? Who's your audience? What's going to help you connect with them? What part of your experience um, is going to help you connect with them? And I think that's actually a really great and amazing thing about being a teacher is that you bringing your whole self to that teaching makes you a better teacher. So sharing that parts, those parts of you can be really powerful. 
Um, our code of conduct, so Carpentries has a code of conduct and enforcement guidelines. Um, so we always share that up front, um, that we have a code of, that we have certain expectations for how the teacher is gonna interact with the students and how the students should interact with each other. Um, and we make those expectations clear. We also give the students an opportunity to connect with each other. This isn't just a dynamic between the person at the front of the room and the people sitting there. Um, it's a dynamic uh, between the students as well. So we, we say we don't like a quiet classroom. We like the students learning from each other, um, partly because they can see each other's struggle a little bit, um, but they can learn from each other and they can teach each other. Sometimes they may think they don't know something, but they actually teach the person next to them. So we have students just take a minute and introduce themselves uh, to each other. And just you say, what's your name? Um, Describe your research in three words or less, and name one thing you're proud of that you made. Um, so it just provides something a little bit interesting. That's, that's one example for a quick introduction, and that makes a really big impact on the feel of the workshop. Accessibility, hide, highlighting up front um, how people can uh, access the materials in a variety of different ways. So in terms of accessibility, this is a place where we have improvement and it also reminds me that I forgot to turn on the captions. Here, let's see there. Um, Telling people up front, see, I'm using the Google captions. We're going to see how it goes. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but telling people up front how they can access materials instead of having to have people ask for them. Um, because sometimes people don't necessarily know um, that they um, have different ways of learning or access challenges. And so being up front with the way, different ways that people can access the materials is important. Um, and then finally, setting expectations for learning. So. We're gonna be in this course. You're gonna be learning a lot of new things. Things are gonna be challenging. You might not get it right the first time. That's okay. We're working through this together. Here's where we're starting. Here's where we're gonna end up. Um, so it's not a mystery around what you're gonna learn. And also setting the stage for the idea that you know that they're going to struggle and that that's expected and that's part of the learning. Okay, so Productive struggle. So we're in the workshop, everyone's excited to be there. Um, and so this, I think I can. A lot of people that walk into a training around coding are disempowered. They feel like it's something they can't do. Um, so it might be that we're not rebuilding, we're just building in the first place, but a lot of times, I am talking, sorry, about adult learners uh, throughout this. Rebuilding that I think I can attitude begins with helping the students achieve small incremental success on important tasks. And both of those things are important. Success, as small successes, and important tasks. If people are having successes on things they view as toy problems, um, they don't feel as accomplished. Um, so how do we embrace productive struggle in our workshop? First, in that introduction, by saying you're going to struggle. Um, but we have the act of learning. So you have to try it um, as a part of the struggle. You can't just hear it. I, like Also in swimming, you don't teach swimming by having everyone sit on the pool deck and show them a PowerPoint presentation, right? That would not be very effective. So the same thing here, get them in the pool, get them in their compu um, computer. And so when we teach, when we're at the front of the room, um, the instructor is coding, and the students are coding along with the instructor. Um, and so it gives people an opportunity to try things out together. So we're not just showing, um, we're working together. We use an I, we, you model of teaching. So I introduce the topic, we work on it together, and then you try it on your own. Um, so again, that has that incremental element to it where you see it, then we do it together, and then you get to try it on your own. And um, also, Meg highlighted this as well, reframing mistakes as learning. So we say the mistakes are the pedagogy. So when you're the instructor at the front of the room and you're live coding, you make mistakes. So many mistakes. <laughs> and um, so it's a real opportunity, one, to show that you are human and that you make mistakes, right? And it's also an opportunity to show how you recover from those mistakes. So we want people to be able to learn how to recover. And so the mistakes are the learning for the instructor at the front of the room when they tell you that you forgot whatever it is you forgot 
or type the same thing wrong for the third time. Um, but they themselves have that process of seeing where they make a mistake and using that to learn rather than thinking of it as a failure. Um, relevant examples. So in software carpentry, data carpentry, library carpentry, we are primarily working with researchers and librarians. And so all of the examples that we use are relevant to the people's research context. So they're working with a system they're already familiar with, so they already have a framework um, that they're interested in and understand, and so the examples come from that, so they're building coding onto a framework that they already have. And then it's also motivational because those are problems that they wanna solve. They wanna go back to their lab, back to their library, and solve those problems. Um, and so using relevant examples helps them feel it is productive. They're doing something that they would do in their daily work. And then finally, immediate feedback and help. Um, so struggling on your own is not very valuable. You do need that someone to be able to step in and say, oh, here, you know, here's where we could do something differently. So it does need to be immediate. Um, and so in all of our workshops, we have two instructors and then we have helpers in our workshops. So we have about a five to one ratio. So the helpers can come and help people individually um, when they're struggling with challenges. Finally, assessment for learning. So often we think about assessment as sort of taking a test, and it's very stressful. Um, but we actually can use assessment as a way to think about learning. Um, and so our favorite version of format assessment is formative assessment, so assessment during the workshop, and we use sticky notes. Um, so if you have our we do an exercise, we say when you're done with the exercise, put up a green sticky note on the front of your computer, and if you're having trouble, put up a pink sticky note, and someone will come help you. So that helps the learner see that um, they can get some help, and also helps the instructor know when the class is having challenges. So if you see a sea of pink sticky notes, you know you need to re-explain that concept. Um, we have the exercises, as I mentioned, um, and then our survey designed to build confidence. So we did put some questions in our survey around skills, and the feedback was that people had a great experience in the workshop, and then they went and took those questions at the end, and they felt like they failed. And was it most important that we knew whether or not they had learned exact syntax, or was it more important around that self-efficacy and that confidence? So it's influenced how we do our survey design. So what we believe about belonging that community, our effort, that productive struggle, and the value of the task leads to the engagement and the motivation. So this is just a big recap of all these things. And I did highlight some of the things that we do, but the concept is really important. What's so amazing about our community is they're always exploring and learning about different ways to implement these things in the classroom. And so actually, how many Carpentries instructors are in the room? Yeah, so feel free to reach out to any of these folks, too, to learn more about some of these things. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go just through some outcomes. So does this work? Um, so one, it scales. We have a lot of instructors. I talked about our instructor training. That gives a lot of people the uh, ability and interest to go teach workshops. So we teach them all over the world. Um, but mostly, does it improve confidence? Um, so when we see just a pre and post workshop of two days, um, we can see that you know, things like confidence in programming and at the bottom and overcome problem in the middle, there's a full point difference in just two days in people's perception of their, conf their feeling of whether they can do this work. And these are the kinds of things they say about the workshop. And this confidence persists long term. So when we do a survey six months more after the workshop, Almost 100% of respondents say, I am more confident now, which is surprising to me because the more I use Python, the less confident I feel, actually. Um, and that people have seen this as value. They highly recommend these workshops. It's something they see as having a positive impact. And then they go on to continue learning, which is the other thing that we want to see, right? That they have that self-efficacy that going on to continue learning. Um, so these are a few different ways that we continue to learn, and I think as we talk about the sprints, um, we'll see that there's lots of opportunities. Um, so just kind of as a, a bit of a wrap-up, um, 
when we talk about how we teach, it's how people feel. And so, Maya Angelou, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Um, and that's what we have the opportunity to do in our workshops, to inspire people um, to use these skills and keep using them in, in their work and in their lives to do amazing things and feel awesome about their capabilities. Um, so I want to thank the amazing Carpentries community that does all of this work. And the opportunity we have here in this summit, something we take to heart, is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Um, and this community is great at coming together to work towards uh, shared challenges. So thank you very much.